What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another episode. Um, today we're going to run through reverse blending. Uh, super simple technique, but it's not overly complicated. It's just kind of doing your blends backwards. Um, and the, the usefulness of this technique is going to be keeping things as tight as you can when it comes to blending your color out. Um, but first things first is you really, really need to make sure that your color match is on point. This isn't going to work very well if your color is slightly off. You're going to need to blend further for that. This is Toyota 070. It's like white platinum pearl or something, something like that. Um, and my color match is spot on. It matches great with two coats of pearl, so we're going to go ahead and go with that. Uh, but basically, what I'm going to do, the gist of it, is I'm going to take my first coat as far as I want to go as far as blending. So, and I'm going to use a mini gun for this. You could use a, a standard size gun. Just tighten your fan in, wind your fluid in, just to keep it tighter. Uh, but a mini gun really does help keep everything small. Uh, but basically, when I go to like go to blend my base color, I'm going to take my white to about here and about somewhere in this line. Obviously, my pearl has to go a little bit past that, which is okay. Uh, that pearl isn't going to change as much over here near this door as you would think it is because I'm going to just be flicking into the wet bed. So the little bit of stray pearls, you'll, you'll see the effect and I will unmask this door at the end and show you that everything looks good. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, go get suited up and I've already got my white ground color mixed up. So we'll get a coat of base coat blender on this and just get started with the process. It's gonna be a pretty quick video. All right guys, so I have base coat blender mixed up, uh, just my DV1. All I need to do now is tack rag this. I'm gonna do a coat of base coat blender over the entire panel. Um, and then I'll take my little Walcom fan jet blower and I'm gonna just start to dehydrate around my repair area. Uh, just so I can start with kind of a dried, dried area. Um, this base coat blender, the reason I'm even going over this is to just kind of seal it off. It, it's not, it's not thick, but it does act kind of like a little barrier between the primer and the new color. So that's why I'm doing it. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna tack it off and get a coat of this on and then we'll just start reverse blending. Like I said, I'm gonna just start to dehydrate this area. It's got that coat of blender over there, so. I'm not, I don't need to fully dehydrate this. I just need to get it to start. And then I can go ahead and start my blend. You could go over this wet on wet, but I'm going to do my color wet on wet. So I want this to be dry so I don't have to worry about any kind of sagging. All right, it's starting to. All right, there we go. That's pretty much dried on the primer. So grab my color. As I mentioned, I'm going to use my uh, mini gun, which my mini gun, see if it'll focus. This is a Segola Mini Extreme with a 1.0 tip on it. Uh, just really precise, easy to control. So. Like I had mentioned, I'm gonna take my, my first coat of coverage coat is going to go as far as I'm going to take this white in, into my blend. Um, and then my second wet on wet coat is going to come in tighter. I'm gonna dehydrate that. Because this is gray, I'm probably gonna have to do three coats. But the nice thing is I can basically just go over where my primer is, where it's showing through. I don't have to worry about really blending because I'm going to do that in this first coat. So let's go ahead and just watch the technique, I guess. Okay, so you see, I went to about here and I went to about there. That's as far as I'm gonna go. Now I'm gonna step it in for my second coat. 
And that's it. I'm gonna dehydrate that. And we're gonna see how this covered. Honestly, I think it might have covered in those two coats, but we'll know after it's dehydrated. This is kind of a little side note, but anytime I use any kind of blower, I have a tack rag in my hand all the time. Um, I'm really like picky about how like clean my gloves feel. I want my hose to be tapped off. It just leads to a cleaner paint job. So if that, this is one of those habits that I like to pass on to guys, like keep a tack rag in your hand. Tack everything as you're going. It's going to lead to cleaner work. Um, especially when you're gonna blow air across the surface. Just start it in your tack rag, okay? So that catches any of the dust that might be in this. And then go ahead and blow off your panel. Um, and the blowers, this one, See that motivated painters on there i got this from gabriel the motivated painters if you don't follow gabriel here on youtube go check out his channel if you spray enviro base wealth of knowledge he, uh, he's awesome awesome resource i don't know if you guys have tried these focus come on come on i don't know why it doesn't want to focus but this is made by milwaukee it's a color match light I just on a whim bought it on the Matco truck and uh, yeah, let me tell you, this thing is sweet. I mean, with a light on it, I can't see it, but I can kind of sort of see it. I'm going to just do one last coat just over where I know my repair area is just to be safe. I UV prime this, that's why it was great. If I had regular prime this, I would have used white. And I wouldn't have to do a third coat, but I didn't have to use sealer, so there's that. Ah. So I'm going to just keep it right over the area. Just like that. Now once, once this is fully dehydrated, I can already tell my blend's already starting out really, really nice. Um, but essentially, when you're looking at a panel where your repair area is, so my repair is just on this lip, utilize the body lines that are in your panel, okay? So this has a swooping line right here. If you notice, when I did those coverage coats, I tried to not go past that. Lose your blends in body lines. It'll save you a lot of headache. Same with like hoods, if you're blending a hood. You'll have, a lot of hoods have that kind of curved line. It's like, just utilize that line and kind of lose your blend in those body lines. It just keeps everything nice and tight. You end up using less product. The blend comes out nicer because you're not trying to flick into the middle of the hood. If you've ever tried to blend a large flat, flat panel, it's not fun. It ends up always showing, even if your color match is on point. So keeping it super tight saves you so much time, so much effort. It'll save you from the dreaded clear it and you see your blend feeling. It's never fun. Uh, but this I am super happy with. I'm gonna go ahead and let this dehydrate just sitting in here. I might hit the flash cycle. Um, and then when this is dry, we'll re-wet bed it and we'll do the exact same process, the reverse blend with our pearl layers. Um, I am not going to do wet on wet with my pearl color simply because it doesn't hold like regular base coat it does like to sag so if you spray ultra 9k don't wet on wet with the pearl layers if you have to do two coats most of them are one this is the rare time that there's two um just fully dehydrate them in between save yourself the headache i i did a wet on wet on a qab nissan no it was an infinity bumper biggest mess i ended up having to just clear it and then sand it because I you can't sand huge runs out of this base coat very well. It's waterborne. So save yourself the headache. Don't do what I did. Don't wet on wet your pearl layers. Anyway, I'll bring you back when we're on to pearl. So now what we're going to do is re-wet bed it. I'll do the exact same thing, kind of go through that area and uh, dehydrate it. And then we'll get onto our pearl coat. Uh, the reason I'm gonna re-wet bed this is first things first, it allows me to see where my pearl is actually at. And then second thing, it gives the pearl something to land in. So it doesn't stand up 
at the end of your blend. So let's go ahead and get this all wet bedded. And as you probably noticed, I actually opt to kind of just avoid the area where I sprayed my white ground. So now all the surrounding area where I need to get my pearl layer down is coated. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pearl and I can just immediately spray my pearl into this. All right, same thing. I'm going to just go as far as I wanna go. I can see where my edge is here of just my white. So I just gotta make sure I go that distance and then my, my second coat is going to step in. I'm not gonna do it wet on wet though. Oh, might need to pop the top, there we go. Okay, so that's my first coat. That's my first coat done. I'm gonna just go ahead and grab my little blower, get this dehydrated, and then we'll check it. And I'll do my second coat stepping in, and then it'll just be control coat, and that's it. Let's do our second coat. This is already starting to flash, so I can get on it. Um, and I'm gonna just try to keep it within this area. looking pretty good and I'm on that second coat I just kept it right on that body line and uh, so far so good that's all looking really nice so I'm gonna go ahead dehydrate this re-wet bed it and then we're gonna do our control coat and that'll just kind of finish off the blend area Now we're going to finish off this little blend with a control coat. What a control coat is, if you spray solvent, don't do this. Um, a control coat is a waterborne base coat thing. Uh, basically, I'm going to drop my, my pressure, double my distance, and just orient all my metallics. You call it control coat, drop coat, orientation coat, whatever you want to call it. That's basically what I'm going to do. Okay. So double the distance. There we go. That all looks really nice. I'm happy with that. Um, typically, tight overlap. You just want to watch those pearls lay down. Um, if you see any kind of striping, what you can do is you can do your first coat this way. This is only with 9K. If you do this with uh, like PPG, you're going to wet out your control coat and you're going to have yourself a bad time. This, if it wets out, it's not a big deal. It's still going to dry properly. Uh, but you can do your first pass. And then you can do what we call a double control and go the opposite way. Okay. Matter of fact, I'll just show you because it's not going to hurt the end result here. This, I already did one way. You can go like this right after to just finish it off. Okay, double control coat. With a mini gun, it's not going to affect your color as much. That just finished off the blend. Guarantee there's no striping. All of my pearls are properly laid down. And we'll let this dry for 15 minutes and we'll clear it. Um, I will bring you guys back after it's done baking and then I will show you. All right, as you can probably tell, the audio didn't record on this clip. So you can see my fender to door. At this angle looks really good. I'm gonna just go ahead and fast forward to straight on so you can actually see how short this blend actually was um, I must not have turned on my microphone or something but uh, 
yeah i'm going to be more mindful of that in the future so i apologize for this last clip guys uh but i will see you guys on the next video thanks for watching